Hey everybody, how's it going? Aja Collections here and today I'm bringing you another action figure video. This time we're looking at how I set up my 3D prints and how I print it. It will probably be like a small series where I teach you how I print, how I clean and how I finish my products. So uh, this one we're looking at is our subject for today. We're looking at the Batman animated series Batman. This is the first version of the Batman with the oval symbol on the chest here. It's similar to the one that Mayfix uh, put out, but it's not exactly the same because Mayfix put out the second version of Batman, which is the new animated series uh, Batman, which is a different chest and also some different proportions. It's more uh, angular than rounded. So this one's a little bit more rounded and it's the first version of the Batman. So we'll take this um, action figure as the subject and learn how to set up a 3D printing file. For the slicer, I use Lightsy Slicer, which is a free tool that you can download online. It has uh, paid extensions as well, but I'm happy with the free version for now. So I just use the free version. Once you have all your files into uh, the 3D setup environment, all you need to do basically is now to align the files and then get them to print so that you know it's supported on the on the platform first of all and second of all it doesn't look dirty or it looks clean where it's more visible so what i usually try to do is make the fronts look a little bit more clean and the backs will have all the supports and once i remove the supports if i sand it down it does look a lot cleaner as well so to kick things off let's take an example of the trunks because the trunks will uh, be like a very prominent feature on the figure it will have paints as well for the belt to be more yellow and the trunks will be black so for that to happen i need to add supports to print this so basically what i do is tilt the trunks backwards a little bit so that we have a nice angle going here and uh for me i don't really put too much thought into how the supports plug in because i'm sanding the figure later on but i always make sure that i add enough supports because the resin i'm using for this print will be the m58 and the f69 from Resion, uh and the resins because the resin is a little bit more heavier uh, and more flexible it does take a little bit more supports so that the print actually is successful uh, with heavier resins when you print and use less supports the supports tend to give up and then the prints just basically stay in the vat which is not what we want so for this print i basically uh, use the tools that are available here uh, so i'm taking this uh, trunk piece adding medium supports and high density of supports and I generate the automatic supports so once that's done you'll see that there are a huge number of supports here and the base of the action figure is heavily supported so what I typically do is look at these more concentrated dense areas and add a few more supports so how I how I can tell if it's a concentrated dense area is when there is a support that I'm hovering over. So this support is not put in place. It's, I'm just hovering over with it. Uh, there is a large coverage. So if you see that, I'm still covering a large area. So what that means is that support will support all of that uh, white area when it's printing. So that's what I typically look at. And I add a bunch more supports just in case to make it a li look a little bit more, I guess, to add a little bit more support. And because the front part is now not covered in supports, I'm actually happy with this and this should print pretty fine. So for the feet, let's look at the feet next. Uh, they are pretty simple. All you need to do is tilt them backwards. So the feet have plug holes here. So basically that's where the uh, peg plugs in. So I need to, um, not much, I think just, uh, just tilt it back a little bit. And once it's tilted back, go to prepare, generate automatic supports, and this should work, I think, straight off the bat as is. Uh, there are a few supports on the side, which I don't mind uh, because I can sand them off. So that inside here, because I'm a little bit worried that it might uh, flake off, I'm just adding one more support in there so that uh, that that top bit is as round as possible and it holds its integrity and shape. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I'm happy with the supports that we have on here. And because layer by layer, there's not not any like uh, places where there is a large impact. And this would be like our base. So that, that would give us the most, um, I guess, support density. And that's where I add a few more just to give, give it a little bit more support. And we should be fine here. 
So after we repeat the process with the other shoe, we can basically move on to this gauntlet. So this gauntlet is more kind of more complex because we've got spikes that go right through the back. So what I want to do here is even if it's a little bit more visible, I want all my supports to be on this side here so that the spikes come out really clean and I don't really need to worry about them. So I'm trying to put the spikes up uh, facing upwards which gives me a little bit of play room with the this side of the gauntlet. So what that means is the gauntlet will have some supports that are visible when you're looking at the figure uh, straight ahead. But with sanding, you can definitely get that to look not as bad. And I think I'm happy with that placement just for now. I'll just look at where the supports get placed automatically. And then if I have to change them, okay. So because there's one support that's plugging right into the gauntlet here, I'm not happy with that. So let's remove all the supports. We go back, we tweak it just a little bit so that uh, all of these don't need supports and they're more, uh, they're more independent. So that would, because we've got a cavity in here, that would give the cavity a little bit more place uh, that needs support. So we can, let's try generating the automatic supports now, see what that looks like. Uh, we're still supporting that and we're supporting more pieces now. So that's even worse. So let's not do that because I think I've got a little offset. That's what's uh, causing that to happen. So let's delete these again, go back, make them, a little bit more like facing upward so that the actual base of the gauntlet supports the fins. If we do this now, hopefully that gives us a better result. Uh, I clicked on the completely, a completely different piece. We'll come back to that later. All right. So I really like how that's looking at that at the moment, because now we've got all this support here, all the support uh, here. There's some support at the front as well. Uh, but I don't mind it too much because it's uh, on the inside, so that part will be facing the body. So I'm not too fussed about that. And uh, because I want the print to be better, I just select some light supports. And then I add some here just to give it a little bit more stability. And uh, these should be fine. Maybe I'll add some light supports here, which I can then sand off. But because they're light supports, they usually leave a smaller dent and they're not as intrusive, so they don't leave big couch marks. So I can add a few more here. So my philosophy is if I add more supports and the print comes out better, I can always clean the supports. If I add less supports and the print is, well, not not 100%, then that's even worse. So that's the gauntlet done. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, not, not too many supports and I can just add small supports to support the integrity of the fins. So now for the bicep piece, uh, because this piece is uh, more flat on the top and it's more structured, we can basically flip it upside down. The reason I flip it upside down is because this this cavity lives within like the body. So it's not really visible to the naked eye. So if I have more supports here, uh, then it wouldn't really make a difference. Whereas uh, this part, because it needs to articulate a lot more, I'm happy with having less supports here. So if we look at this, uh, go to our prepare, medium supports, high intensity, and if we do that, we should get a pretty clean looking support. Most of the supports are within the figure, so that's really good. I'll add a few more supports here and there just to give it a little bit more uh, support in terms of pull. And that should be fine. So next up, we'll look at uh, supporting the fist and I'll show you how you can do something quicker if you have identical um, parts. So basically with the fist, what I want is for the cavity to have more support and the actual fist part to have less supports. That will basically mean that the fist uh, is not very visually scarred when you print it. So I usually try to uh, do that where we're adding more supports to the inside of the fist because it's already got so many details. A little bit of uh, divots or things like that will be a less of a distraction. Whereas if you add it to the outside here because it's so smooth, any divots or any well resin that's missing will look a little bit more jarring. So I try to tilt it a little bit to the inside so that we've got more supports here. So once I've done that, uh, let's add medium supports at a high intensity 
and uh, that's what it should look like so that's pretty good we've got one support here or two supports here and they're not that intrusive we can add a few more supports inside there i'm just adding small supports so that because the fist is already so small it doesn't create too many issues i'm adding some supports here and there just looking at the area of impact the larger the area the better placed supports are for me so that's what I do. That looks all right to me. I'll just add one more there. So that looks all right to me. And what I want to do to basically create another one of this is press copy, create one more copy, which will give me a supported copy of the fist here. Move that around and then click on mirror and basically just flip it around. So now I've got the right hand and the left hand. So just to make it a little bit more distinguishable, I can basically turn it around and now we've got the right hand and the left hand. So with both hands being placed, I can now delete this one, which I put in there because I wanted to show you guys that I was doing both hands. So we can just basically delete that one. And now all we have left to do is the neck. Uh, neck should be fairly simple because it's a circular flat base uh, and the back of the neck is less visible for us. So I just tilt it backwards circular base with the peg holes on the top and the bottom so prepare add medium supports it's just like before and yeah we're good all good to go uh there's not many places within the sculpt that actually need support so i'll just add one there so it's easy to take out on the bottom there is a bunch of more areas that i like to support so I'm just adding these supports here so that the print comes out more finished, basically. So lack of supports could cause your prints to like miss parts of the print. So adding more supports always uh, works out for me. So that's typically how I set up my prints. And now all we need to do is lay out everything in a more, I guess, equally spread out kind of pattern so that nothing touches nothing else and we everything has ample space to print and we've got some extra so the resin that i'm using uh, like i said before is the resion m58 and resion f69 50 50 mix it will make the resin or it will make the end print a little bit more flexible and with a little bit heat it can be a lot more flexible so easy to swap out everything like that but the reason i want to not print too many things within the build plate is because with this resin it's very heavy and when you've got all the parts touching each other it just adds a lot of weight to so if i if i do this basically this part the printer will print it as one part so this gives it uh, this makes this support basically need to support the weight of two items rather than just one so individually printing them when where they're not touching is usually what i find to give me more success so that's what i usually tend to do so in terms of my support settings, if we go to export here, that's basically where you export the file out of. Uh, this is my resin setting here. My printer is the Elego Mars 2 Pro. Um, with the resin settings here, this is the resin setting I use for my resin M58, Resion M58 plus resin F69 mix. So if we look at it here, the print layer height is a uh, four microns or four uh, 0.4 millimeters um, there's no light of delay uh, the exposure time is 2.3 seconds per layer and the lift distance is five millimeters in height uh, the burn-in layers is basically the first five layers that go on to the base plate and uh, for the first five layers i've got 33 uh, seconds of exposure time basically it solidifies the resin a little bit more so that it sticks to the build plate a lot better and uh, there is a light of delay i don't think that matters too much i still have it there um I think it's just the default setting that I left in there. Uh, six millimeters of lift and 180 uh, lift speed. So basically turning that to 180 basically makes it a little bit faster. And uh, the print duration is cut a little bit shorter because of the faster lift speeds. But if you want to see my settings, that's basically what I use for my Elegoo um, Mars 2 Pro. So once I have my resin settings dialed in, I basically go to, so I, I do add anti-aliasing. So I add a standard anti-aliasing, usually turn it up to 16. It just makes the print a little bit smoother. Uh, once we're ready, we just export slice to file. Uh, there is a short advertise that I'll probably edit out. All right, so once that's ready, uh, this is the part that I created for myself. I'll just create a test version here for our print. 
so save that and it will start slicing the file. So the slicing doesn't take too long, especially with the uh, lychee slicer, it's pretty quick. And uh, once the file is generated, I can basically see the file, put it into a thumb drive and then put it into my printer and start printing. So it's pretty simple after that. Uh, but I'll just quickly show you one more thing when that loads. Okay, so with the slicing completed, we can see that the estimated print time is one hour and 10 minutes. It will be a little bit longer because of the initial burn in layers, uh, but that's just a very, I guess, uh, it's, it's accurate enough. It's an estimate, but it's accurate enough. Uh, the resin volume is 12.47 uh, milliliters, but I usually think that I, I use uh, maybe a couple more milliliters of resin. That's because of the wasted resin that I need to clean off or uh, whatever is in the build plate that gets cleaned off when I'm cleaning the build plate and the vat. Uh, estimator price is not correct because that's just uh, something that's... Uh, I don't think I put in a resin value there. So it's just something that the system's calculated, but I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh, but yeah, basically the size file is done. If I open the folder, it'll tell me where the slice file is, copy it over to my pen drive and start printing.